Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today we are focusing on some winter care tips for Phalaenopsis orchids. Now, if you're looking for a more general care video, not really cold season specific, check out the description. I do have one of those as well. Very easy to follow for beginners. Today though, we are focusing on the little changes that we might have to do in our care regime for this orchid in the colder season. Today's video together with our entire Orchid Care for Beginners series is of course sponsored by repotme.com who offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchid. From potting mixes to pots, fertilizers and all sorts of accessories. They have them all. And not only for orchids, but also for other houseplants as well. So check them down below. I'll link you to them in my description and in the pinned comment. And I will also link the products that I personally like and I still use. After so many years, I started using them even before this collaboration. So you have everything in the description. So with that said, let's get to the list. Cause yeah, you guys know I work with lists. <laughs> I swear without lists, my life would fall apart. Part. Anybody can relate or is it just me? <laughs> right. Number one, make sure you do not leave these orchids in the cold. Some of us like to put our orchids outside in the warmer months and that is absolutely fine. And Phalaenopsis orchids are actually warm growers. As long as you don't put them in direct sunshine and cook their leaves, they should be just fine even in intense heat. But when cold comes around, they absolutely have to come inside. I would personally not even attempt to keep an orchid in lower than 15 degrees Celsius. You'll have the equivalent in Fahrenheit on the screen right now. And I'm sure some of you already know about that cool down that they should experience in order to bloom. Well, that cool down should not go below 17 degrees Celsius. So it's not really all that cold. It's just a little bit cooler than summertime perhaps. And that should happen in autumn. Well, after the orchid starts to produce its spike, it is absolutely safe to put it back in the warmth. And actually, it is much better to do so because the flower spike will grow faster. In warmer temperatures, the metabolism of these orchids increases as well. Therefore, the flower spike will grow faster as well. So that cool down is only necessary until you see the flower spike. After that happens, bring your orchid inside, keep it in the same room with you, make sure it receives the warmth you're enjoying because they do actually make for great house pets. <laughs> they really like ambiental home temperatures even in winter time. Alrighty, had a little bit of an accident. <laughs> Next up, make sure your orchid receives adequate light. In many territories around the world in winter time, day length is a lot shorter. Maybe the position of the sun changes in such a way that it's not really casting as much light as it should. Maybe it's falling behind some buildings. Whatever the case might be, make sure you keep an eye on your orchid in its current location because sometimes it might have less light in the winter time. Coupled with the fact that we have shorter days, that can actually mean less photosynthesis time for your orchid and slower growth. Now, these orchids come from regions where the whole day length situation is not so dramatic. Pretty much they do experience very similar lengths of day and night. So they don't really need shorter day in the winter time to initiate flowers or anything of the sorts. Tested by myself personally, I happen to have switched countries and observed how these orchids react in different territories regarding day length and temperature and so on. So I can assure you there is absolutely no impact on spiking, but I do notice that in the winter time, if I leave these orchids just with the natural light, they do grow slower than when I keep them 12 hours a day under grow lights. Now, if you cannot provide artificial light, don't worry about it, but just make sure that your orchid is not sitting in the dark or very, very shady. In some regions of the world, winter is very, very long, so keeping your orchid half a year without proper light will definitely make a noticeable impact in its rate of growth and development. Bottom line, light is very important. Make sure that in winter time, you're not depriving your orchid from light, obviously unintentionally. Next up, make sure you don't water your Phalaenopsis orchid too often. Now, with the change in season, sometimes there comes a change in temperature as well in our homes. This will be very dependent on how you like to keep your home in the winter time, but typically in my home and other homes in winter, it tends to stay a little cooler than in the summertime. So it is very, very common for orchid pots 
to dry out slower in the winter time, and we need to adjust our watering regime. If in summertime we would water our orchid every five days, let's say, maybe in winter we would have to water it every eight days or so, since the pot is not completely dry after five days. So if you notice that the pot is still wet on watering day, let it be for a few more days, and in time, and in time you will discover a little bit of a schedule when it comes to winter and how your orchids behave in your home in the colder season. Next up, if you are tempted to repot your orchid in winter, maybe postpone it to springtime unless it is absolutely necessary. If your orchid has rotten roots or you have pests in the medium or, you know, things of the sorts, go ahead and perform the repotting. If you're just thinking, well, the orchid is a little root bound, just postpone the repotting. It's not the end of the world if you repot it in winter, contrary to what some articles make you believe. But because the orchid is already growing slow, it will adapt slower and take off slower as well. And especially if your home tends to stay a little cold, your orchid will be focusing all of its energy on flower spike production rather than new vegetative growth production. So those brand new roots you are hoping to get in a brand new pot, in a brand new medium, they're not necessarily going to happen. So the whole adaptation to a new pot will be postponed as well. Generally, Phalaenopsis are very strong orchids, so I don't think you're gonna lose an orchid or things of the sorts, unless, again, there is a special case and you have a very stressed orchid. But to respect a little bit the timeline and the growth pattern of your orchid, it is best to perform repotting when the flowers are done, or at least when the orchid pushed out all of its buds and everything opened, and it's not really focusing on that anymore, but on vegetative growth. So when you see new leaves from the top forming or even new roots starting to form, that is a great time to repot. It's ideal. Again, not the end of the world if you're not in that timeline. Winter really is for flowers and flower spikes, not vegetative growth. Next up, and this is a question I get a lot in the comment section, do not stop fertilizing your orchid just because it's not really growing all that fast. But you can definitely reduce the frequency. You're reducing the frequency of watering as well, if it's the case, of course. So you should reduce the frequency of fertilizer as well. Coupled with the fact that vegetative growth is low, you really don't need to overdo it with fertilizer, but you shouldn't really stop it either because your orchid is not dormant, it's not taking a break from anything, it is still working, it is still producing things, and flower spikes take a lot of energy. Yes, it does have stored energy, but it's also a good idea to keep a stream going. Many times you will see your orchid not only produces spikes but also new root tips. So do not overdo it with fertilizer, reduce the frequency to half if you are fertilizing every two weeks, every week, whatever, and that should be absolutely great in the winter time, but I don't advise you to completely stop fertilizing. I personally never stop fertilizing my orchids, except if they're the species that go dormant, but Phalaenopsis are not. They're not deciduous, they don't grow dormant or go dormant, they keep growing things all winter long and they need a little bit of fertilizer here and there. Next up, this is a little bit of a warning, because I've been through it, be wary of cold surfaces, especially cold windows. If you're keeping your orchids next to the windows, or maybe you're moving them closer to your window to receive more light, make sure that the leaves do not touch the window. They are very cold sensitive, and the surface of the leaf that touches the cold window can actually develop a really nasty patch of damaged tissue and that can transform into an infection and that can spread and in the end you can lose the entire leaf if you don't address it. So it's a very good idea to keep them a little away from the windows. If a root touches the window, I observed it's not all that sensitive, nothing bad will happen, but the leaf, oh boy, it's not really fond of cold surfaces. And another thing that you should be careful with is the flower spike. It will always try to grow towards the light. If it touches that cold surface, it might be damaged so bad that it will completely stop growing. So just be mindful to pull it away, stake it, train it before it touches the window, which flower spikes are very prone to do. And especially in winter, it's a very good idea to keep an eye on your orchid and just stop it from crawling on the window. Next up, another warning type of a tip, be careful with heaters. 
Those of you who are using any type of heater or heat source like a chimney or I guess fireplace is a better word for it. Sorry, in my language, they're I think kind of the same word. Even an AC, make sure that your kit is not sitting on top of a hot surface or in the direct path of a heater of any type because it's not going to like it. Not only the temperatures might be a little too high for it and the leaves can overheat and get damaged, but also the dry air can actually make buds fall. And that's not fun at all. We've been waiting an entire year for this orchid to bloom and all of a sudden the buds and flowers are dropping because of the extreme dry air or the extreme heat. So again, be mindful of your orchid's location and make sure it's really not touching anything super hot. It's not sitting above anything that gets super hot. Warm air itself is okay as long as it's not hot air. And I'm sorry if you hear some noise in the background. I live in an area where it's never quiet and I'm recording at 6.30 in the morning and <laughs> I cannot catch a break. I'm sorry about that, but let's power through. Next up, be careful with watering, specifically not to leave pools of water in crowns and in between the leaves, places where an infection can start just like that. In wintertime, in some homes, since the temperatures are lower, lingering pools of water are very, very common, much more common than in summertime. In winter, we don't really ventilate our homes as much, so air movement can be impaired sometimes as well. So bottom line, these pools of water are more prone to stick around, collect bacteria and promote rotting. Particularly if you're growing your orchid upright, which is highly unnatural for Phalaenopsis actually, they typically grow like this, then pools of water are a real issue. So make sure that when you water, you do not leave anything in the crown and in the joints. If you do, don't worry about it, just take a napkin and remove all of it away. The less water, the higher the chance that everything will evaporate sooner rather than later. But yeah, be extra careful with this aspect in the winter time, particularly if you know your home is not really on the hot side, you like things a little bit cooler. And lastly, short and sweet today. <laughs> my birds are amused as well. I'm gonna show you my birds. You might have heard them in this video. I'm gonna show you who the culprits are. Okay, lastly, growth in wintertime might actually be much slower than in summertime. Do not worry about it. Do not try to improve your orchid with all sorts of magical potions and uh, hormones and kelp and things of the sorts. No, it is absolutely normal for your orchid not to grow new leaves or new roots in the wintertime and focus on that flower spike. Mine do kind of still grow a little bit more in wintertime because I have a very warm climate. Winter is short, kind of warm and very bright, so they still grow. But in my old location, in a temperate climate, they would grow pretty much nothing all winter long except for that flower spike. So do not worry about it. Do not stress out. Do not try to give them more fertilizer or miracle potions or things of the sorts. It's absolutely normal. And it will depend on each environment. Some of you might still have roots growing in the winter, some of you might not. And this is the most important thing to remember. Do not compare your orchids so closely to other people's orchids. What you should be focusing on is that your orchid has nice green leaves, has nice roots, whether they're growing in the winter or not. It has nice flowers and so on. But this growth pattern really highly differs for each and every one of us, and that's mainly due to environment. Sometimes it has to do with the hybrid or the variety you have as well, but no orchid will be identical with a different orchid that somebody else has. So do, do not put yourself through that. And that concludes the winter care tips that I have for you. Other than that, really the care remains absolutely the same. And these are just some pointers for you to be a little bit more attentive for. And some things that I've noticed in my experience, you don't really have to do anything super different for them in the winter time other than what you have been doing. Just be a little bit more attentive to environment and how this changes. Also, these are the culprits. They are making filming difficult sometimes. Now they're in a very active period. They're both females. And because they're imprinted on each other, this is how they arrive to me, they lay eggs at the same time. So we have four infertile eggs at one time. So there is about a month's period when they... Oh, no, no. <laughs> they don't really care. Oh, goodness. 
So for about a month, they don't really care about anything other than those eggs, but when they get bored of them, they start to wreak havoc in the growth space, especially when I'm filming. Don't you little burdens, little chicken, little chicken. But I love them, my funny girls. So these are the chickens you keep hearing in the background, laughing and flying around and so on. Alrighty, so with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you, RepotMe, for sponsoring yet another video from our series. And before I let you go, if you're into aquariums and would like to see some videos about that as well, check out my second channel. It's only about aquariums now there. And for the orchid stuff, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I post every week. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.